ecology is a new science having only become prominent during the second half of the 20th century. Ecological thought is derivative of established currents in philosophy, particularly from ethics and politics. Its history stems all the way back to the 4th century. One of the first ecologists whose writings survive may have been Aristotle or perhaps his student, Theophrastus, both of whom had interest in many species of animals and plants. Theophrastus described interrelationships between animals and their environment as early as the 4th century BC. Ecology developed substantially in the 18th and 19th century. It began with Carl Linnaeus and his work with the economy of nature. Soon after came Alexander von Humboldt and his work with botanical geography. Alfred Russell Wallace and Carl Mobius then contributed with the notion of biokinosis. Eugenius Warming's work with ecological plant geography led to the founding of ecology as a discipline. Charles Darwin's work also contributed to the science of ecology, and Darwin is often attributed with progressing the discipline more than anyone else in its young history. Ecological thought expanded even more in the early 20th century. Major contributions included Edward Suess and Vladimir Vernadsky's work with the biosphere, Arthur Tansley's ecosystem, Charles Elton's animal ecology, and Henry Cowell's ecological succession. Ecology influenced the social sciences and humanities. Human ecology began in the early 20th century and it recognized humans as an ecological factor. Later James Lovelock advanced views on Earth as a macroorganism with the Gaia hypothesis. Conservation stemmed from the science of ecology. Important figures and movements include Shelford and the ESA, National Environmental Policy Act, George Perkins Marsh, Theodore Roosevelt, Stephen A. Forbes, and Post Dust Bowl Conservation. Later in the 20th century, world governments collaborated on man's effects on the biosphere and Earth's environment. The history of ecology is intertwined with the history of conservation efforts, in particular the founding of the Nature Conservancy, 18th and 19th century tools to ecological murmurs, Arcadian and imperial ecology in the early 18th century, preceding Carl Linnaeus. Two rival schools of thought dominated the growing scientific discipline of ecology. First, Gilbert Whitehead Parson naturalist is attributed with developing and endorsing the view of Arcadian ecology. Ecology. Arcadian ecology advocates for a simple, humble life for man and a harmonious relationship with humans and nature. Opposing the Arcadian view is Francis Bacon's ideology, imperial ecology. Imperialists work to establish through the exercise of reason and by hard work man's dominance over nature. Imperial ecologists also believe that man should become a dominant figure over nature and all other organisms as once enjoyed in the Garden of Eden. Both views continued the rivalry through the early 18th century until Carl Linnaeus's support of imperialism and in short time due to Linnaeus's popularity, imperial ecology became the dominant view within the discipline. Carl Linnaeus and Systema Natri Carl Linnaeus, a Swedish naturalist, is well known for his work with taxonomy but his ideas helped to lay the groundwork for modern ecology. He developed a two-part naming system for classifying plants and animals. Binomial nomenclature was used to classify, describe, and name different genera and species. The compiled editions of Systema Natri developed and popularized the naming system for plants and animals in modern biology. Reed suggests Linnaeus can fairly be regarded as the originator of systematic and ecological studies in biology diversity. Due to his naming and classifying of thousands of plant and animal species, Linnaeus also influenced the foundations of Darwinian evolution. He believed that there could be change in a between different species within fixed genera. Linnaeus was also one of the first naturalists to place men in the same category as primates. 
the botanical geography and Alexander von Humboldt. Throughout the 18th and the beginning of the 19th century, the great maritime powers such as Britain, Spain, and Portugal launched many world exploratory expeditions to develop maritime commerce with other countries, and to discover new natural resources, as well as to catalogue them. At the beginning of the 18th century, about 20,000 plant species were known, versus 40,000 at the beginning of the 19th century and about 300,000 today. These expeditions were joined by many scientists, including botanists, such as the German explorer Alexander von Humboldt. Humboldt is often considered a father of ecology. He was the first to take on the study of the relationship between organisms and their environment. He exposed the existing relationships between observed plant species and climate, and described vegetation zones using latitude and altitude, a discipline now known as geobotany. Von Humboldt was accompanied on his expedition by the botanist Amy Acute Bonpland. In 1856, the park grass experiment was established at the Rothamsted Experimental Station to test the effect of fertilizers and manures on hay yields. This is the longest-running field experiment in the world. The notion of biokinosis, Wallace and Mobius, Alfred Russell Wallace, contemporary and colleague of Darwin, was first to propose a geography of animal species. Several authors recognized at the time that species were not independent of each other and grouped them into plant species, animal species, and later into communities of living beings of biokinosis. The first use of this term is usually attributed to Carl Mobius in 1877, but already in 1825, the French naturalist Adolphe Duro de Lamal used the term societe about an assemblage of plant individuals of different species, warming and the foundation of ecology as discipline, while Darwin focused exclusively on competition as a selective force, fusion warming devised a new discipline that took abiotic factors, that is drought, fire, salt, cold etc. as seriously as biotic factors in the assembly of biotic communities. Biogeography before warming was largely of descriptive nature, faunistic or floristic. Warming's aim was, through the study of organism morphology and anatomy, i.e. adaptation, to explain why a species occurred under a certain set of environmental conditions. Moreover, the goal of the new discipline was to explain why species occupying similar habitats, experiencing similar hazards, would solve problems in similar ways, despite often being of widely different phylogenetic descent. Based on his personal observations in Brazilian Cerrado, in Denmark, Norwegian Finnmark and Greenland, Warming gave the first university course in ecological plant geography. Based on his lectures, he wrote the book Planters am Fun, which was immediately translated to German, Polish and Russian, later to English as The Ecology of Plants. Through its German edition, the book had immense effect on British and North American scientists like Arthur Tansley, Henry Chandler Cowles and Frederick Clements. Malthusian influence Thomas Robert Malthus was an influential writer on the subject of population and population limits in the early 19th century. His works were very important in shaping the ways in which Darwin saw the world worked. Malthus wrote, that the increase of population is necessarily limited by the means of subsistence. The population does invariably increase when the means of subsistence increased and, that the superior power of population is repressed, and the actual population kept equal to the means of subsistence by misery and vice. In an essay on the principle of population Malthus argues for the reigning in of rising population through two checks positive and preventive checks. The first raising death rates, the later lowers birthing rates. Malthus also brings forth the idea that the world population will move past the sustainable number of people. 
This form of thought still continues to influence his debates on birth and marriage rates to this theory brought forth by Malthus. The essay had a major influence on Charles Darwin and helped him to theorize his theory of natural selection. This struggle proposed by Malthusian thought not only influenced the ecological work of Charles Darwin, but helped bring about an economic theory of world of ecology. Darwinism and the science of ecology It is often held that the roots of scientific ecology may be traced back to Darwin. This contention may look convincing at first glance inasmuch as on the origin of species is full of observations and proposed mechanisms that clearly fit within the boundaries of modern ecology and because the term ecology was coined in 1866 by a strong proponent of Darwinism, Ernst Haeckel. However, Darwin never used the word in his writings after this year, not even in his most ecological writings such as the foreword to the English edition of Hermann Muller's The Fertilization of Flowers or in his own treatise of earthworms and malformation in forest soils. Moreover, the pioneers founding ecology as a scientific discipline, such as Eugen Warming, A.F. W. Schimper, Gaston Bonnier, F.A. Forel, S. A. Forbes and Karl Mobius made almost no reference to Darwin's ideas in the works. This was clearly not out of ignorance because the works of Darwin were not widespread. Some such as S. A. Forbes studying intricate food webs asked questions as yet unanswered about the instability of food chains that might persist if dominant. Competitors were not adapted to have self-constraint. Others focused on the dominant themes at the beginning, concern with the relationship between organism morphology and physiology on one side and environment on the other, mainly a biotic environment. Environment, hence environmental selection. Darwin's concept of natural selection on the other hand focused primarily on competition, the mechanisms other than competition that he described, primarily the divergence of character which can reduce competition and his statement that struggle as he used it was metaphorical and thus, included environmental selection, were given less emphasis in the origin than competition, despite most portrayals of Darwin conveying him as a non-aggressive recluse who let others fight his battles. Darwin remained all his life a man nearly obsessed with the ideas of competition, struggle and conquest, with all forms of human contact as confrontation. Early 20th century Tilda expansion of ecological thought, the biosphere Edward Suess and Vladimir Vernadsky. By the 19th century, ecology blossomed due to new discoveries in chemistry by Lavoisier and de Sauche, notably the nitrogen cycle. After observing the fact that life developed only within strict limits of each compartment that makes up the atmosphere, hydrosphere, and lithosphere, the Austrian geologist. Edward Suess proposed the term biosphere in 1875. Suess proposed the name biosphere for the conditions promoting life, such as those found on Earth, which includes flora, fauna, minerals, matter cycles, etc. In the 1920s Vladimir I, Vernadsky, a Russian geologist who had defected to France, detailed the idea of the biosphere in his work, The Biosphere, and described the fundamental principles of the biogeochemical cycles. He thus redefined the biosphere as the sum of all ecosystems. First ecological damages were reported in the 18th century, as the multiplication of colonies caused deforestation. Since the 19th century, with the Industrial Revolution, more and more pressing concerns have grown about the impact of human activity on the environment. The term ecologist has been in use since the end of the 19th century.
the ecosystem Arthur Tansley, over the 19th century, botanical geography and zoogeography combine to form the basis of biogeography. This science, which deals with habitats of species, seeks to explain the reasons for the presence of certain species in a given location. It was in 1935 that Arthur Tansley, the British ecologist, coined the term ecosystem, the interactive system established between the biokinosis and the biotope, the environment in which they live. Ecology thus became the science of ecosystems. Tansley's concept of the ecosystem was adopted by the energetic and influential biology educator Eugene Odom. Along with his brother Howard T. Odom, Eugene P. Odom read a textbook which educated more than one generation of biologists and ecologists in North America. Ecological Succession Henry Chandler Cowles at the turn of the 20th century. Henry Chandler Cowles was one of the founders of the emerging study of dynamic ecology. Through his study of ecological succession at the Indiana Dunes, sand dunes at the southern end of Lake Michigan. Here Cowles found evidence of ecological succession in the vegetation and the soil with relation to age. Cowles was very much aware of the roots of the concept and of his predecessors. Thus, he attributes the first use of the word to the French naturalist Adolphe Giraud de la Malle, who had described the vegetation development after forest clear felling, and the first comprehensive study of successional processes to the Finnish botanist Ragnar Hult. Animal Ecology, Charles Elton, 20th century English zoologist and ecologist, Charles Elton, is commonly credited as the father of animal ecology. Elton influenced by Victor Shelford's animal communities in temperate America began his research on animal ecology as an assistant to his colleague, Julian Huxley, on an ecological survey of the fauna in Spitsbergen in 1921. Elton's most famous studies were conducted during his time as a biological consultant to the Hudson Bay Company to help understand the fluctuations in the company's fur harvests. Elton studied the population fluctuations and dynamics of snowshoe hare, P. Canadian lynx, and other mammals of the region. Elton is also considered the first to coin the terms food chain and food cycle in his famous book Animal Ecology. Elton is also attributed with contributing to disciplines of invasion ecology, community ecology, and wildlife disease ecology. G. Evelyn Hutchinson, father of modern ecology George e. Evelyn Hutchinson was a 20th century ecologist who was commonly recognized as the father of modern ecology. Hutchinson is of English descent but spent most of professional career studying in New Haven, Connecticut at Yale University. Throughout his career over six decades, Hutchinson contributed to the sciences of limnology, entomology, genetics, biogeochemistry, mathematical theory of population dynamics and many more. Hutchinson is also attributed as being the first to infuse science with theory within the discipline of ecology. Hutchinson was also one of the first credited with combining ecology with mathematics. Another major contribution of Hutchinson was his development of the current definition of an organism's niche as he recognized the role of an organism within its community. Finally, along with his great impact within the discipline of ecology throughout his professional years. Hutchinson also left a lasting impact in ecology through his many students he inspired. Timeline of Ecologists